This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back baseball fans to the summer 7073 carryover league. We are back in the American League playoffs wild card round a series between a couple surprising teams from this timeline the Milwaukee Brewers and the Chicago White Sox. Let's go look at the overall postseason schedule here. Um, Nash League has Finish its wild card round. The Dodgers went on the road and took care of Vegas three straight. So the Dodgers waited for the winner of Atlanta and Houston to situate. And it was a classic best of five series between the Braves and Astros. Astros winning it three games to two, meaning that Joe Morgan and Cesar Cedeno, Jimmy Wynn, will play the Cincinnati Reds in the divisional round of the playoffs in the National League. The number three versus the number two. And the Dodgers will play the New York Mets. And these should be classic series in the National League. In the American League, we know that the Twins and Indians played five games. Cleveland wins three games to two. Uh, upset over Minnesota. Ending the Twins season in another disappointing fashion for the Twins. Cleveland is awaiting for the result of this series. You have... Two of the hotter teams in all of Stratomatic in the American League, at least, if not all of baseball. The White Sox um, were a very intriguing team coming into this season as the Twins, because of their veteran postseason history, were considered a favorite in the division. And you had a Kansas City Royal team, the young expansion team of 69, who were putting together a really fine young team led by Amos Otis and Freddie Patek and Cookie Rojas and guys like that. But Kansas City fell in their face terribly this year, and they just had a disastrous season. The Twins were okay, but the White Sox acquired Dick Allen, an MVP, and they also have Wilbur Wood, a Cy Young winner, and they built pieces around it. And this White Sox team, not in the American League West against the big bad Oakland A's anymore, were free to blossom. They would play 14 consecutive games against the Minnesota Twins to distinguish first and second place. They won eight, lost six. It didn't really distinguish much. Finished in a dead heat with the Twins, but the White Sox had a tiebreaker. So when they went in, into the postseason tournament, they played Cleveland and beat them four straight. And that's why the White Sox got the division and the number three seed. Now, Milwaukee's case is even more curious. I mean, the Milwaukee Brewers had been in the last place every year in the last three years with a Seattle Pilot expansion team that went wrong in a hurry. But... They went into a postseason tournament with a losing record and then just steamrolled everybody. They beat Kansas City, the previously mentioned, previously mentioned a disappointing Kansas City team. They beat them four games to one. They shocked the world up here in the five-game elimination, needing to win four out of five against the big bad Detroit Tigers, a World Series team a year ago. They whipped them four straight. So look at Milwaukee here. Milwaukee... 4-1 against Kansas City, 4-0 against Detroit, that's 8-1, and then again over here against the Toronto Blue Jays, 2-1. So they are 10-2, winners of 10 of their last 12 games. You do that, you're going to the playoffs, folks. You get hot, super hot, sizzling hot. Nobody hotter than the Milwaukee Brewers. Don't know how they're doing it, but they got into the playoffs as a number six seed, and we have Milwaukee and the White Sox. And let's see what's happened. Game one. We get roster pitching resets. So you have the Aces, Jim Colburn and the Brewers against Wilbur Wood. 
uh, the Cy Young winner uh, give, gave him the award because of his ridiculous number of innings pitch and carrying the White Sox pitching staff on his back. It is the Chai Sox in the fourth inning getting hits and walks and singles consecutively, getting three runs. Three would be more than enough for Wilbur Wood. It's a 4 nothing game, and yes, it is Wilbur Wood taming the once-hot Milwaukee Brewers with a three-hit shutout in Game 1. The White Sox win 4 to nothing, and you're starting to think that the White Sox are smirking a little bit going, ah, these Milwaukee Brewers, they're paper tigers. They're, they're not legit, right? Well, let's find out some more about Milwaukee. After losing Game 1, do they come back to Chicago and earn a split? It's Mike Torres, a journeyman uh, nomad. He's sort of like my Stratomatic Carrier League chess piece. If I need a pitcher on a certain franchise, I trade him. I get Torres traded all throughout, all throughout baseball. I trade Mike Torres because I know he had a long career moving through place to place. So anytime I need a pitcher, I put him in a trade. And he was sent to Milwaukee, who he never pitched for, I don't believe. But he's the number four starter. Uh, went seven and two thirds innings against Tom Bradley and the White Sox. Bradley, another great pitcher for this White Sox team. White Sox don't have to apologize for anything. They are a, they got great starting pitching. They got seven solid hitters in their lineup. Really good hitters. Their bullpen is ordinary. Their bench is ordinary. Second base and catcher aren't that great, but otherwise, this is a contender, folks. Top of the first, the Brewers come out swinging off Bradley. A single and out, a single out, and then a two out single and a double by George Scott, two zip. They come right back in the second inning and do it again. Bradley didn't have a good breakfast this morning. Give up a walk, a single, a couple strikeouts, a single and a double, and quickly, very quickly, it's four nothing. But you figure the White Sox have a little bit of comeback in them. Fifth inning, they get some gifts because Milwaukee, frankly, is on a talent level, is a type of team that would give you gifts. Uh, routine fly ball to the E16 left fielder is dropped. Uh, fly ball to the E7 halfway decent center fielder Steve Hubley is dropped. Back to back errors gives you a run. Then you have a triple by Dick Allen starting to heat up a little bit here. And they get a couple. They get three runs back. It's a 4-3 game. And then in the eighth inning, uh, the Milwaukee Brewers have the best closer in the American League, Ken Sanders. Been to like three All-Star games. One and done. You get a lead of the ninth inning, forget it, it's over. But they can't get that bridge. Seven and two-thirds for Torres, a couple walks. They have to go to Dan McGinn, a lefty specialist, to face Tony Muser. It doesn't work, it's a single, and the White Sox tie it at four. But in the top of the ninth inning, Tom Bradley relying on him a little bit too much, not confident in the Chai Sox bullpen. The four runs in the cup, first two frames, then he cooled down amazingly. But in the ninth inning, after two outs, a single, a walk, and a single, that's the fifth run. And then enter Sandman, enter Sanders man, Ken Sanders. Does it again, give up a hit and a walk, struck out a couple batters, but another save for Ken Sanders. And these Milwaukee Brewers are letting the world know, here we are, we're not a fluke. We are not Cinderella. We just got a split in Chicago, and oh, now we have home field. And are thinking about the divisional series against the Oakland A's on the horizon. So, game three, what happens? Now that we're in Milwaukee, we have Stan Bonson. Versus Bill Parsons having a nice year for the Brewers. We get a White Sox, Louis Aparicio, the spark plug gets on with a single, and then a sack fly by Dick Allen, one zip. But Milwaukee's leadoff hitter, Steve Hovley, a Kansas City Royal player. Let me bring this up really quick. Uh, 196 at bats, the dude hit three home runs as a left handed batter. They gave him power both ways. Don't know why they gave him power both ways, but they did. Uh, Stan Bonson has a home run on 6-10 on his own card because he gives up some homers to lefties. And Hubley rolled it there. It's 1-1. Tom Egan, backup catcher for the Chai Sox, hits a homer. It's 2-1. It stays that way till the bottom of the fifth. After an out, Bonson walks a guy a single. And then, yes, you kind of understood the prologue there. Steve Hubley 
rolls the 610 homer off the Stan Bonson card again. And that's uh, four runs off of the exploding bat of the natural, Steve Hovley. Steve, isn't he Hovley, as we like to say. So it's 4-1, and now suddenly Hearts in Chicago are getting a little get a little sick here, watching their Chai Sox crumble a bit. We get to the eighth inning, and they get a rally. They get they load the bases, two singles a walk, a sack fly by Jim LaFay. But this time with two outs, Louis Aparicio, who they have relied on him so much for big hits, he cannot make a play. He strikes out in the eighth inning. And with a 4-3 game, what at, what do you do if you're Milwaukee? The only thing you know to do, enter Sanders, man. Enter Knight, enter Sanders, man. Ken Sanders in the ninth inning. Again, the White Sox make it interesting with a couple singles. Buddy Bradford grounds out, and Bill Melton flies to center field. Another 4-3 win for the Milwaukee Brewers. And we have a fascinating game four, where the Milwaukee Brewers at home have a chance to go to the American League Divisional Series. But what also makes this fascinating, Game 4, is that when we look at the scheduled pitchers for today, Wilbur Wood was originally going to pitch Game 5, and Lou Krause was going to pitch Game 4. But we switched it up, and Wilbur Wood, yes, Wilbur Wood, is going to pitch on two days rest, as he was known to do in this timeline. And now Wilbur Wood is coming back in game number four, and Lou Krause will be pushed to, pushed to game five. Lou Krause was a free agent that Chai Sox acquired in the offseason. So, for the first time, really, in my history, I've never had a pitcher, starting pitcher pitch on two days rest before. But the White Sox did it with Wilbur Wood plenty of times, and now we are going to see history play itself out in a way it needs to play out. Your American League Cy Young winner probably has MVP votes, threw a shutout against the Brewers in Game 1, has to win this game to save the White Sox season. Let's take a look. It's Wilbur Wood and the Chicago White Sox on the road for the Brewers. It'll be Jerry Royce, a very young Jerry Royce. 1970, he was with the Cardinals. 7-8 and eight with a 4-11 ERA and 127 innings, acquired by Milwaukee, or the Seattle Pilots perhaps, in the expansion thing. And it'll be some time before Jerry becomes that outstanding pitcher we know him to be in the mid to late 70s and 80s with the Dodgers and Pirates and Dodgers. But no bigger moment now for the young Milwaukee Brewers no bigger moment now for Chicago's uh, Wilbur Wood to make some history by winning a game on two days rest. By the way, Wilbur Wood could also pitch into extra innings. Uh, probably, yeah, he really should get MVP votes. The MVP went to division rival Harmon Killebrew. And frankly, that was biased because of history suggesting that Killebrew won the 1969 MVP. So. Let's get started from Milwaukee. Uh, leading off, of course, for the White Sox, Louis Aparicio, 65 off Royce, is a roller to second base. Walt Williams, 43, skies it in the right field. This is JLU, a 3E12. And he makes a two base error. Runner at second for Carlos May. It's lefties and righties perfectly fine. Doesn't matter. 6-12, rolls to the pitcher. And with two outs, it's Dick Allen. 55, bouncer to short. This is Fergosi, a two-e, a two at short. The three makes the play. Bottom of one. Steve isn't he Hudley. 64 off wood. Catcher's card. We got Mike Ryan today, the better defensive catcher. 2E3. Makes the play. J, uh, JLU, 63 off wood, first X. This is Muser, a 2E14, talking Tony Muser, and he boots the ball. E12 is that first baseman, he's an E14, that's an error. JLU is on for George Scott. 1 9, center field, and with two outs, Jim Fregosi, 4 11, rolls to first base. A couple errors, and a scoreless first frame. Bill Melton, leading off in a second. 1-9, nine, 
Homer on a one, fly ball the rest. Oh, you hate those on cards. Almost would rather just make it a fly ball out automatically so you're not disappointed when you get to that number. Jim LaFay, 2 6, grounds are short. Talking, Tony Muser, 35, flies to right field. It'll be Don Mincher, 43, off woods, guys to the left. Now, in left field, we have a Carlos May, a 3 e 5 in left field, makes the catch. Ken McMullen, 37, is a base at the right field. Rick Reichert, 411, first C. Runner at second, two outs for Ron Tiabal. 111 rolls ashore. We go to the third. It's Buddy Bradford. Normally he bats fifth against right as he crushes them. But against lefties, not that much of a hitter. So you slide him into the eighth spot. 68, though, gets a single off the Jerry Royce card. Mike Ryan, the catcher. 1-4. Oh, boy. Backup catchers hitting a double plays. That's not a good combination for the 179 hitter. Yeah, we remember that the White Sox, you know, they do have some problems. They do have some flaws, as do the Brewers. So we can expect, you know, to see things like this. It's certainly not like the National League. Louis Aparicio with two outs now. 47 is a walk off the Royce card. Cease Steeler. McNerney's got a plus two arm. They got to get something going. They're going to try a stolen base. He steals on a two. The T rating of 13, McNurtney's T is 1 of 10. So, Aparicio will be on second base, and with two outs, it'll be Walt Williams. 1-4 is a hit by the pitch on Walt Williams' card, and with two outs and two on, after the single and double play, it'll be Carlos May. Let's take a look at the Carlos May card of 1972. Just as valuable, maybe not in the overall American League, but just as valuable to this White Sox team, to Dick Allen was his sidekick, Carlos May. They both hit 308. Percentage points indicated that Allen uh, led the team in hitting by, what was it? 506 at bats for Dick Allen, 523 at bats for Carlos May. It was that close. But a big moment here for Carlos May with two on and two outs. And here is the pitch. 66 off of Royce is a fly ball to right field. Not looking good early for the White Sox. Bottom of the third, it's Jerry McNurtney. 410, rolls a third. Melton's a 317, makes the play. Steve Hubley. Oops. There's the misplaced the Hubley card in the stack here. But Steve Hubley, 2 6, is a ground of the first. And with two outs, it is JLU. 34, pops to shortstop. Wilbur Wood doing his job, as you would expect. Better than doing his job. That makes 12 shutout innings in this wild card round. Leading off in the fourth, it's Dick Allen. 55 off Royce, short X. Shortstop is Mr. Fergosi at 2E22. Both shortstops are good. 2E22 for Fergosi and 2E21 for Aparicio. Bill Melton, 5'10 off of Royce, found the column of Jerry Royce. It's 5'10. And it's Homer 1 to 11, double, and it'll be a 17, so it's a two base hit for Bill Melton. Wind's blowing in here in Milwaukee. A runner at second with one out for Jim LaFay. 55, short X, again, is a 2E22, and it's a GBA, so the runner holds second with two outs for talking Tony Muser. 2-5, let's take a look at the talking Tony Muster card. Guy had the gift of gab, practical joker. Boy, him and Jay Johnston, man, they should have been on the same. They probably were on the same team, right? I'm guessing Jay Johnston was with the White Sox for a little bit. Those guys probably performed a bazillion practical jokes on their teammates. 2-5 here, double one of six, single dot dot. That is an RBI single on the White Sox. Get a lead. Here is Buddy Bradford. 65 off of Royce, rolls the second. Milwaukee's got to be happy with these four innings out of Jerry Royce. And uh, if they had a deep bullpen, they'd go to it, but they don't. But still, uh, Royce is the weakest of the four pitchers that the White Sox have, that the Brewers have, I should say. And he's only giving up a run. Bottom of the fourth, George Scott, 68. 
Mine's the first. Jim Fregosi. Two, five. Let's take a look at Fregosi's card. His, oh yeah, the big 1970 year, 670 plate appearances, 278, 22 home runs. Adds your 2E22 shortstop, plays some first base. Hits righties better than lefties, but here, 2 5 is triple 1 2 double. Runner on second, the tie run at second for Don Mincher. 38 is a K. And with two outs, that's Ken McMullen. 311 flies to left field. We go to the fifth. Mike Ryan. 411 rolls the first. Aparicio, 48, single one of five. Cannot get it. Rolls an 11. White Sox are snake bit, it seems, with their offense and getting some breaks. Walt Williams, 65, rolls a second. They were hoping for more against Royce and only got a run. <laughs> Forcing Mr. Wood to throw another shutout to this point. It'll be Rick Reichert. 2-5, bounce to third. Ron Theobald, 57 is a K, and with two outs, it's Jerry McNertney. 3-10, rolls to short. Wilbur Wood with a two-hitter of his own through five. As we go to a six, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, in the sixth inning, it is just one to nothing. Milwaukee's got to be feeling good. The pitching disparity of Wood versus Royce, and they're only down a run. This is, Royce is a starter seven, actually, not a starter six. So that's even better news for the Brewers. Here's Carlos May, the meat of the lineup here for the Chai Sox. Carlos May, three, six, you saw the card earlier. It's a homer chance, oh boy. These are gonna kill the White Sox. Three, six is homer one to two, fly ball to right, and that's a fly ball to right. I mentioned Melton earlier. They got some really ugly looking homer fly balls on this White Sox team. And that has been uh, harmful today, at least. All right, Dick Allen. 1-9, let's take a look at Dick Allen's card. Again, it was said he was, he and Carlos May made life miserable in 1972 for the American League West. His MVP card here, Chai Sox went after him sooner uh, making a deal with the Phillies so that he did not have to make stops in St. Louis and LA. So he goes straight from Philadelphia to Chicago so we can get four years out of this card. And that really tilted the balance, really, of this White Sox team and made them a contender. And 1 9, double 1 to 15, single dot dot is going to be the two base hit. Wow. So think about that. He rolled the nine in that column and got an extra base hit. Five, six, seven are home runs, and then home run double, double single. So that is a big extra base hit for Dick Allen, who had just 28 doubles and five triples with his 37 homers, but he loaded them up against lefties. Bill Melton is the batter. Let's take a look at the Melton's card before he swings as well, because I wanted to show you that homer fly ball that he missed earlier in one nine. But a big moment here, he's needing a 3-5 or 3-6 to give some cushion. 1-5 is a walk. Two on now for Jim LaFay with one out. 3-10, Jim LaFay. Let's take a look at his card acquired from the Dodgers. You know, you're going to see guys on the edges of baseball uh, near the ends of their career start moving around and playing for different teams. And the White Sox said, give us Jim LaFay. We love the switch hitting ability and the play all infield positions. Jack of all trades in the infield. And he hits lefties with power better than righties. 310, single dot dot, and the White Sox now have a 2 0 lead. Runners with the corners, one out. Royce starting to turn into a pumpkin. I'm going to leave him in there because, again, Milwaukee's bullpen is pretty dreadful until you get to Ken Sanders. They're going to bring the infield up with one out and face talking Tony Muser, who has an RBI in this game. 69 is a sky to shallow left will not score a run and with two outs it's buddy bradford may as well take a look at buddy bradford and see this rather curious card and reason why he bats eighth against lefties he's got the reverse platoon thing happening crushes righties and somehow can't figure out left-handed pitching at 41 percent and when you add up this statistics on the other side of the card he's a 238 hitter with eight homers and 168 at bats 
but he's highly desirable because you want a right-handed batter who crushes righties. It's more important, and you're willing to live with the, the mess against lefties. And frankly, he sometimes doesn't play against lefties, and they go to Russ Snyder. So here's a big at bat with two outs in the sixth inning. The pitch to Buddy Bradford, 4-11. Rolls to first base. Well, you, you gotta love that if you're Milwaukee. They got the three runners on, only gave up the two runs. Two runs for Wilberwood will it be enough. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Steve Hubley. One, seven, oh boy. Well, let's take a look at the card. We didn't look at it, have we? He, this is a guy who had two homers in game three. Uh, he had a grand total of three homers in 1972. 1-7 against the lefty. Homer, 1-10. Fly ball the rest. And we look up, and it is a 6. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Steve Hovley's world. You know, we're just living in it. That's all we can say. That's another Steve Hovley homer. The unstoppable slugging machine of the was Kansas City Royals, now Milwaukee Brewers. It's 2-1 game, and Wood has finally been scratched for a run. JLU, 63, bouncer to first. Talking Tony Musery, 2E14 to first. Base and oh boy, oh boy, he boots a ground ball, the normally reliable Muser here, and now Milwaukee has seizes an opening. George Scott, 2 8, and just like that, it is a 6, 4, 3, double play. On a plus, I might want to mention, but why that is so interesting is that nobody can steal on this team. They have one beast stealer, and that's the number eight hitter, Ron Theobald. No speed at all on this Milwaukee team. So with two outs now, it'll be Jim Fregosi. Two eight. Hits the column again for a single. And with two outs, it's Don Mincher. 49 off the wood is a swing and a miss. Wood battles back. Still can't believe Hubley's ball got over the wall. It's a 2-1 game. Top of the seventh. Got to be feeling good if you're Jerry Royce. You're competing. You're only down a run. And I uh, have a chance to, I don't know, you still have a chance to get a win in this game and go to the next round of the playoffs. Mike Ryan leading off in the seventh. 112 bounces the third. It'll be Louis Aparicio. 52. Sky's a left. And with two outs, Walt Williams, 47, there's a walk for a sea stealer. You got Carlos May, Dick Allen, Mel and Bill Melton. You got Murderer's Row up. So yeah, you could steal a base if you wanted to, but the thing about this Murderer's Row is they also draw walks, and I would hate to ruin this inning by getting thrown out. So Carlos May is gonna swing away with a runner at first and two outs. The pitch to Carlos, 37, and what did he do, folks? You guessed it, he drew a walk which was the perfect strategy. Now you got your runner in scoring position and you got the 1972 MVP who's one for three with a double at the plate. And now Milwaukee is like, uh, let's pump the brakes for a second. Let me think about this. We're still trying to win this series in four. We don't want to go to Chicago. Jerry Rice has pitched well to this point. Let's not kill the guy though. And they're going to make the move. Jerry Royce will be pulled. He's a batter away from breaking. And he's Jerry Royce, and he's not particularly good. So they're going to go to another right-hander in the bullpen, who's about the same, but is at least right-handed and not left-handed, to face Dick Allen. That is John Gelnar. John Gelnar comes in, was a Brewer in 1970, was 4-3 with a 421 ERA in 92 innings. And yeah, folks, I mean, this is reality. This Milwaukee team's not that great, uh, but here they are. And so this is who they bring in in a key moment. John Gellner in the seventh with two on and two outs to face Dick Allen. And here is the pitch. 1-8, Dick Allen nails the column. It's double one to five, single dot dot. That's a homer chance against lefties, by the way. But against righties, it's just double one to five, single dot dot. It's a single dot dot, and we get a run, and it's three to one. With runners on the corners, and Bill Melton is your batter. 6-10 off Gelnar is a bouncer to third. They got some good defense in their infield, do the Brewers. Ken McMullen, 2E13 at third base, makes the play. The infield defense might be one of the strengths of this Brewer team. 
You got George Scott, a one at first. Fregosi, a two at short. McMullen, a two at third. They have a three at second base in the platoon of Theobald and Dick Schofield. So, 3-1 game, bottom of the seventh, stretch time here in Milwaukee. We have been listening to I Am the Cosmos, Chris Bell of Big Star, out in the mountains, uh, thinking about himself a lot, and yeah, that you get the idea. 27 cuts, uh, compilation of stuff in the studio, uh, at or with Big Star during the timeline, and like a hundred different versions of I Am The Cosmos, of course. Yeah, good stuff from the fallen Big Star, Chris Bell. Bottom of the seventh here, Wilbur Wood. He sees the end of the tunnel and how to get through this. He's got to go through the lineup one more time and not give up three runs. Feeling confident, pitching on two days rest. Starting to think he's a little getting a little tired here, maybe, because he hasn't pitched on two days rest yet, but now he's in this situation. Kevin McMullen leads off, 6'10", bouncer to short. This is Aparicio, a 2 e 21 and a cheap single off Louis Aparicio. Well, that's not a good start. Tough break for the Chai Sox. The normal reliable Aparicio gives up a single. Now you got Rick Reichert. 1-8, Reichert strikes out. Ron Theobald. 3-10 is a 6-4-3 double play. Wilbur Wood just laughs it off. Don't worry about it, Louis. I got this. I got you, buddy. The single doesn't... No damage. It's a 3-1 game into the eighth. Jim LaFay. 2-7. Bounce to third. They're going to pull LaFay and go to a two-second baseman defensively. Bobby Canoop to finish the game to help Wood out. Tony Muser. 4-11. Flies it in the left. This is Reichert. A 3-6 in left field. Makes the catch. And with two outs, Buddy Bradford. 3-6 is a walk. And with two outs, it's Mike Ryan, 4-10, flies to left field. All right. And actually, boy, they're getting real defensive. They're going to put Russ Snyder, a two in left field, for Walt Williams. He may have gone to right field. So they got all their defense in with six outs to get in a two-run lead. Wilbur Wood, there's no light on in the White Sox bullpen. They're back at the hotel. And it'll be Jerry McNurtney leading off for the Brewers. 47 off the wood is single one to six, and he misses it with a 16. Steve Hubley, Homer, the only taint against Mr. Wood in two starts against this team. 2 6 is a roller to first, and with two outs, it is JLU. 2 6 a single. And with two outs, it's George Scott. Let's take a look at him, folks. Probably the biggest threat today is right here. George Scott's 1970 card with Boston. 296 with 16 home runs. Play both corner spots. Of course, first is much better than third. Red Sox did not really need him anymore. They had so many. They had Yaz, and you get the idea. And what's his name? Uh, Petroselli was moving to third base anyway by this point. So Scott was sent away. Here is the pitch to George Scott. 1-7, just misses it, folks. It's triple, 1-11, single dot dot, and it'll be a single dot dot. So, that will not score a run. And the two runners are on with two outs. Wood is a starter nine, no danger of breaking. And it'll be Jim Fregosi. He's had some success today. He is two for three off of Wilbur Wood. Big moment here for Jim Fregosi versus Wilbur Wood. And the pitch to Fregosi. Two six, he comes through. It's a double to right field. George Scott, he got a good jump off of first here. Double to right field. Scott can fly. He's a 14 runner. 15, 16, and we got Carlos Mays noodle arm in right field, so he scores. No, he doesn't. He does not score. He rolls a 20. He rolls a 20 running the bases. You gotta be kidding me. He must have fell down between third and home during the relay throw. He rolls a 20, so he had, frankly, I think it was like a 1 in 19 chance, or 1 of 22 chance. 
Actually, what was it? It was 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. A plus three arm for Carlos May. It was a 1 in 19 chance. And he rolled a 20. And he's gunned down at the plate. A horrible break. And some magic for Wilbur Wood. And it stays 3 to 2. Wow. What a stunning end of the eighth inning there. George Scott thrown out of the plate with a roll of a 20 on the advance on a 1-19 shot, and it stays 3-2. They cut the lead to 1, and with all that, we go to the ninth inning, and Gilnar will continue. Actually, I think they're going to go to a different reliever here, yeah. So Royce pitched, what, 6 and a third? 6 and 2 thirds. Inning and a third for Gelnar. So in the ninth inning, they're going to go to Dan again in the ninth. And he'll face the top of the lineup. You got Aparicio, but then you took out Williams for defense. Then you got Snyder and May. So two of these three are left handers. So that's why McGinn's in here. Louis Aparicio. 2 8 is a base hit. C. Steeler. Now who's ca catching? You still have McNurtney catching. As a plus two arm catcher, he's going to steal a base, try and get things going a bit, and he rolls a 16 and he's thrown out stealing. Well, that did not spark. Now you got Russ Snyder. 1 8 is a walk. He's on first for Carlos May. 1 8 Carlos May is a 4 6 3 double play, and that is your ninth inning. And suddenly it's 3 2 in the bottom of the ninth. The good news for the White Sox is those three base runners in the eighth with two outs don't really hurt Wood as he's a starter nine. So he has to pick up his bootstraps and just go back out there and do more Wilbur Wood things for one more inning. Heck, if they tie it 3 3, Wood will continue into extras. So in the bottom of the ninth of a 3-2 game, the White Sox have all their defense in. They have their Cy Young winner in. If the Cy Young winner gives, gives up the two runs in the bottom of the ninth, it is meant to be. And as they go out with the guy they won on the mound. So Don Mincher leads off for the Brewers. 1-8. Let's take a look at the Don Mincher card. He was a Washington Senator in 71. He had moved to Oakland. I think he did play for the Brewers in somewhere in this timeline. 71, a 280 hitter. 12 home runs in 4 and 15 at bats. 1 8 is a single. The Brewers have the tie run aboard. And it'll be Ken McMullen. Pitch to Ken McMullen. 48 off of Wood is a bouncer to second base. They improve the defense with Bobby Knoop. He's a 2 e 15. This is a double play ground ball. But he rolls a ground ball C. He cannot get it out of his webbing of his glove. He has to throw over to first. And the runner from first goes to second base. That's a big play. Says the Brewers do get the tie run in scoring position. And oh boy, folks, I'm smelling extra innings and 19 innings out of Wilbur Wood, which wouldn't be the first time, I guess, or 14 innings or 18 innings. Ken Wood, give me a short day by getting two more outs. Enforcing a game five back in Chicago. You have a runner at second with one out. It is Rick Reichert is the batter. The pitch to Rick. 5'11 off of Wood is a pitcher X. Now Wilbur is an E6 pitcher. This should be an out for Pete's sakes. And it is. So we got two outs and a runner at second. And it comes down to Ron Theobald. Ooh. There you go, folks. Again, Milwaukee. They're not supposed to be here, folks. But they are. Ron Theobald with the Brewers in 1971. Had a nice year. He had 276 and 400 plate appearances. Not a lot of extra base hits or power. You know, uh, versatile utility guy. Handles the bat route well. Runs well. B stealer. A bunner. B hit and runner. Doesn't do much more after this season, curiously. But here is the biggest moment to this point of the Ron Theobald career. The tie run at second base with two outs in game four of the American League wild card. The pitch to Ron. 2-11 hits the column but misses the roll. 2-11 is a pop to second base and the Wood Wilbur. The Wilbur Wood gets the final out of a 3-2 uh, thriller. Got some help 
by the base running gods as mysteriously George Scott does not score from first on a double against a plus three throwing arm. But that's okay, folks. You need to get some breaks here and there. The White Sox clearly got one. And they've even this series two games apiece. And game five will be back in Comiskey Park. Wow. Let's do the box. Much more exciting series than I thought there would be. We would have. Woods numbers, nine hits to two runs. They were earned. No walks, four strikeouts. Complete game, of course. No walks again for Wilderwood. Stunning. Uh, let's see. McGinn of the ninth, a hit, a walk, and then a double play. Gellner inning in the third. Did give up that single to Dick Allen, and that insurance run was needed. A hit and a walk. Royce, hey, he fought. Yeah, he faced Wilderwood, what we expect. And he's just not the same. Doesn't come from the same cloth there. Gives up the three runs, uh, five walks, and no strikeouts. Interesting game. The White Sox took seven walks and didn't strike out. The Brewers didn't take any walks and struck out four times. 1009, 0109, 3729, 3729, 7004, 7004. That is game four. The American League, we talked about this ad nauseum. It's wide open with the outliers. And we saw Minnesota and Cleveland go five games, and we're seeing the same thing again today. Oakland is watching this patiently on their yacht somewhere. The wealthy member of the American League sitting on three consecutive World Series titles in the early 70s, waiting to see who their victim is going to be. Is That's sort of the storyline in the American League. So the Brewers now, after splitting four games, uh, Year to date, they're 24 and 20. They're hitting 264 with a 308 ERA. Very good numbers. Uh, Colburn is 4 and 8 on the year. He's pitched better than the record indicates. He's got three complete games. His ERA is about three and a half, really. He will be pitching game five. Bill Parsons, six and two. Again, Ken Sanders. Just forget it, folks. If you get him into the game, you are in trouble. He has 14 saves, clearly the most in all of baseball. In 25 and two-thirds innings, he's only given up four runs. Brewer offense, they got uh, 37 RBI by George Scott. 58 hits, and he's probably the team MVP, edging out Jim Fregosi. Yeah, he's going to edge Fregosi for that number. 24 and 20. Huge overachievement for the Brewers. Now, for the Chai Sox, they're 26 and 21. They're hitting 268 with a 303 ERA. And yes, Mr. Wilbur Wood is crashing into double figures. <laughs> 10 wins, triple figures, 145 and two thirds innings, 13 complete games, 37 runs in 145 innings. The 229 ERA, easily the Cy Young winner, and frankly sh was snubbed a bit for MVP votes because he's him being a pitcher. But he certainly deserved it today, coming back on two days rest to keep the White Sox season alive. Bradley's five and six, but he's had a nice year. He's had some bad luck. The White Sox bullpen is it's okay. They have four wins, they have four losses, they have saves among three different levers, they are just untested. And they're going to have to be tested in game five because Lou Krause, uh, the odd man out, uh, is going to have to pitch. Now Krause is four and two, I believe he was a California Angel maybe, signed as a free agent, 22 runs in 51 innings, he's pitched to a 388 ERA. And he, Luke Krause will battle against Jim Colburn, advantage Mil Milwaukee. Uh, but the bats, Buddy Bradford does have 10 homers. Of course, Bill Melton has 10 home runs. Dick Allen, not so much. He's got seven home runs, 32 RBI. He's 52 for 177. 
sitting 294. It's all pretty ordinary, frankly, for the MVP. Uh, Louis Aparicio, my goodness, folks. I've had great luck with his cards over the years. Hitting 356, pacing the White Sox year after year after year, leading off. So we will have a game five. I will give you results at the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you next time. Well, folks, it's all over uh, in Game 5. This is the box score from Game 4 you just saw, where Wilbur Wood beats um, Jerry Royce by a score of 3-2. to two. In Game 5, back in Chicago, it's going to be uh, Jim Colburn, uh, loser of Game 1 to Wilbur Wood, coming back on three days rest in a Game 7, uh, against Lou Krause, an interesting player acquired by the Chai Sox in the offseason. 71, he was a brewer. With a 295 ERA and 180 innings. Nice little pitcher here. It's a starter six. And uh, fine. I, I always thought that Krause was the weak link. But he's got a 295 ERA. Bradley, 296. Stan Bonson, 361. And then, of course, Wood, 191. So, really, the White Sox have great starting pitching when you consider uh, the state of the American League at this time. In this game, bottom of the second inning, here the White Sox get started. A hit, a walk, a couple singles. That's a two-run single by Bobby Knoop. How about that? Bobby Knoop is the star early. It's 2-0. Then in the third, the story is Jim Colburn just is not pitching that great in this series, which is a shame for the Milwaukee Brewers because Jim Colburn was a 20-game winner in 1973 with this card, and he brought eight losses into this game five. It's 4-0. The story today is Lou Krause, a guy, a anonymous guy, really wasn't connected to the Chai Sox here, but he gave up a hit and a bunch of walks through six innings. Um, in the seventh inning, he got a little bit of help from Terry Forster with two on. Um, Forster got the final couple outs. In the bottom of the inning, some bad defense by Milwaukee because they just are incomplete as a team. Two more runs score, it's 5-0. The White Sox can sense it. However, they have to use their bullpen to finish the game. And it's mostly, it's, a, it's an okay bullpen. Terry Forster, Dick Selma, Dave Lemons, Bob Humphreys. That's who they have. It's mostly untested. It gets through a five-run lead with six outs to get. There's some sloppy White Sox defense. Error by normally slick-fielding Tony Muser. Two-base error by Carlos May. They give up a homer to Rick Reichert in the ninth inning to make it 5-2. to two. But the closer, Bob Humphreys, gets the final out. Whew. They do some deep inhalations in Chicago. They win this series three games to two. Both Milwaukee and the White Sox got road wins, so cur courage on both sides. Um, you know, you're not responsible for who, you, who your opponent is. You just have to deal with them. And the White Sox dealt with the Brewers by winning the game three series, three games to two. And now the America League and the wild card round is over with. Uh, the Indians, the number four seed, and the White Sox, the number three seed, they both held on. So they held on to home field in the wild card round, barely, by winning three games to two and three games to two. So it means the number three White Sox will go to Fenway Park and play the Red Sox in a best of seven. And the Cleveland Indians will face the Oakland A's in a best of seven beginning, of course, in Oakland. The number six, excuse me, the number uh, four seeded uh, Cleveland Indians. And in the National League, the only uh, upset in the National League was that the Dodgers uh, defeated the number three seed Las Vegas team. So you've got uh, three versus two in each league, and you've got four versus one in the American League, five versus one in the National League. If you look at the combined games over 500 of the final eight teams in the National League, it's 14, and then 27, and then 36, and then 43. If you look at the American League, it's 14, it's 22. So. 46 to 22, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, 43 to 22, whatever it was. It's double. So the National League has a decided advantage over the American League 
in the carryover league this year. And so we'll see if it plays out. A member Oakland did win three straight World Series. Baltimore won a World Series in 70. Uh, so the American League is well represented in this timeline. So, But uh, it seems like oh, collectively the National League has got more talent in this timeline. That's it for the wild card round. We'll begin the divisional series, divisional round playoffs. We take the 2-2-1-1-1 format that the NBA uses in a divisional round. That gives a slight and even more of an advantage to your number one and two seeds, Oakland, Boston, the Mets, and the Reds. Thanks for checking this out, and we'll see you next time.